Coming up, we give you an overview of what UI students discuss with legislators in Des Moines. And later, an Iowa City store that's nearly as old as the university. We'll show you more coming up. Did the rain wash away softball's losing streak? I'll give you the gloomy answer in sports. Is this sunshine going to last? Find out more in weather. All that and more is coming up on this Wednesday, April 10th edition of DITV. Don't click away, it all starts now. Good morning and thank you for tuning in. I'm Becca Scadding. And I'm Kaylin Cluck. On Tuesday, Hawkeyes flooded the state capitol for Hawkeye Caucus Day, a day where students were able to advocate for a variety of issues important to themselves and other members of the University of Iowa community. Those a part of the annual caucus had one-on-one -on -one meetings with Senate legislators to discuss issues ranging from state funding to medical amnesty. Unique opportunity for students, UI Student Government Relations Director Connor Wolf emphasize the importance of the annual event. Wolf said, quote, a lot of government relations is relationship building and making sure that legislators know who we are. We're able to talk to them about student concerns, end quote. For more on what students discussed at the Capitol, as well as UI President Bruce Harold, check out today's copy of the Daily Iowan. The State Board of Regents has announced that they likely will delay discussion regarding raising tuition rates for the 2019-2020 academic year. This comes after the legislature has not yet finalized fiscal funding for Regent Universities in the year 2020. According to the news release from Regents, there is currently not enough information on state appropriations to conduct the reading of tuition, uh, of tuition rates. If the Regents do not discuss tuition at their April meeting, a special meeting will be held later in April or possibly the beginning of May. The last time the Regents delayed a reading regarding tuition was in 2017. The Iowa Senate unanimously passed House File 700 on Tuesday, a bill allowing emergency refills for prescription drugs without a prescriber's authorization. The new law would allow a 30-day supply of the emergency medication, while Iowa's original law only allowed 72-hour medication supply. The bill is said to be inspired by 32-year-old Jesse Lutkin, who died last spring after he could not afford insulin to treat his type 1 diabetes. A bill was proposed to the Iowa Senate suggesting emergency refills of insulin prior to House Filed 700, but was replaced to include a wide range of emergency medications. The University of Iowa has requested an increase in the budget for the UI Stead Family Children's Hospital. The State Board of Regents will be considering this request after the courts decided that UI owes millions to merit construction and modern piping. The hospital's current budget was sitting at about $360 million with the proposed increase adding on $32.5 million for construction costs. The Regents will discuss the proposal at their April 18th meeting. Plastic is a common material used in our everyday lives. The City of Iowa City has made great progression to influence better recycling habits by installing recycling bins across public spaces. But there's one plastic tool that's often forgotten, creating problems for the environment. DITV News reporter Jacob Gunther has more. Plastic straws, a common tool in our lives that often doesn't get recycled. One that also makes our lives easier, but at a dangerous cost. Because of its nearly 1,000 year decomposition rate, this little guy could be around to see the year 3020, and to one environmentalist, that is just too long. Plastic straws are sort of a symbol of what is wrong with the single-use plastic movement. You can't imagine how many hands go into making that plastic straw before it gets to your table when you're at a restaurant, but then you use it for an hour, maybe even 20 minutes, maybe 10 if you're eating fast food. It's existence on this earth for your 5, 20, 1 hour time of using it is expansive in the resources and the time and the people that go into that. The many businesses have taken the first step in sustainability by making policies of their own to bring down waste. Iowa Chop House is one of few restaurants in downtown Iowa City that has made changes to how they serve drinks by not autonomously handing out straws and only doing so upon request. It definitely helps to, it reduces costs, you know, you're not buying as many straws and you're really um, invoking like a new kind of, um, I guess,
guess, persona, like brand for the um, Iowa Chop House. Others like Milk and Dumpling Darling have also led the way to minimize their plastic use or found new ways to effectively dispose of waste, helping to create a path for others to follow. Reporting in Iowa City, Jacob Gunther, DITV News. Well, Kaylin, we are officially back to that time of the year in Iowa where it's super nice out one day and back to freezing a couple days later. Yep, four seasons in one week. Gotta <laughs> love the Midwest. But let's toss it over to Abby in weather for an update on the situation. Yes, ladies, you are right. These past couple days have been a dream for Iowa City with the temperatures getting up into the 70s and the sun shining. However, I'm afraid these upcoming days are not going to be as pleasant. As of this Wednesday, the high is only going to reach 45 degrees along with a 60% chance of rain showers this afternoon. But as the night rolls around, we do see those showers dissipate and the low drop down to 40 degrees. As for the rest of the week, Thursday is not looking much better with an 80% chance of scattered thunderstorms throughout the day. But the high is going to get up to 65 and the low dropping down to 35 degrees that night. Friday, we don't see any rain, but the temperatures are going to drop again with the high at 45 and low at 30, along with winds at 30 miles per hour throughout the day. As the weekend starts, we start to see that sun poke out with Saturday's high reaching 51 with partly cloudy skies, but that rain coming back that night and continuing on into Sunday, we will, where the high will be around 50 and the low in the lower 30s as that rain continues throughout the day. We'll wrap up this extended forecast with Monday where the high is going to be in the upper 50s and the low in the mid 40s with cloudy skies all day. As we can see, the rest of the week is going to be wet and gloomy, so fingers crossed until we can see that sun shining once again. Becca and Kaylin, back to you ladies at the desk. Iowa City has revealed a major construction project for Dodge Street in the year 2023. The two-year project will be set to improve a one-mile stretch of Dodge heading southbound from North Governor to Burlington Street. The construction will replace the pavement of the road along with replacing four traffic stops, the storm sewer system, and curbs. The project is said to cost a little over $13 million with construction running from 2023 to 2024. A fine piece of jewelry can make all the difference for one Iowa City store. But for one Iowa City store, they have been selling jewelry to the Iowa City community for over 160 years. The ITV News reporter Lauren Burrell has the story. Hands Jewelers was first opened in 1853 and is the oldest jewelry store in Iowa. What was first started as a watch repair store is now a specialty jewelry and retail shop. They say the key to staying in the business for as long as they have is change and loyalty. We've been pretty dedicated to being involved in our community, to being honest about what we do, and to offer the best service we know how to offer. And Bill showed me around the store and told me about how the store has physically changed over the years, but certain parts have stayed the same, like this wall that has been with the store since the beginning. He says everyone who is hired has a certain talent, whether that's wrapping gifts and making bows or repairing jewelry. Everyone at Hands wants to help everyone find what they're looking for. If you're not able to make it into their store, be sure to check out their online store. They have a ton of amazing options and they're only a click away. Hands is not only loyal to its customers, but the community and Hawkeye community as well. Bill says anyone can come into the store and get their jewelry cleaned by their steamer and customized to make their piece even more unique. The assistant manager told us her favorite part about her job is being able to be a part of the special moments in a person's life. Well, not that we get engagements every single day, but I would say that would be my favorite part is just helping people with that really important moment in their life. Everything at this store is always done with the customer's best interest at heart. Very Iowa nice. Reporting from Hands Jewelers in Iowa City, this is Lauren Varell, DI TV News. Well, Kaylin, unfortunately for Hawkeye softball, that nice weather from this weekend did not stick around for their yeah, game. Yeah, that's right. But let's toss it over to sports for a breakdown of what happened. Yeah, you ladies are right. It was a rainy one out at Bob Pearl yesterday when Iowa took on Iowa State. And although the rain was falling, the runs were not. Junior pitcher Allison Ducey took no mercy, collecting eight strikeouts for the Hawks. Iowa got their first hit in the third inning by junior Haven Montier, but the Hogs just could not send her home. The Cyclones snuck ahead in the end with an RBI double in the sixth and a home run in the seventh, taking this one two to zero.
can hit hit hard balls off of a very good team, you know, off a very good pitcher. And and as long as they understand that they can make those adjustments early on and, and know what they're up against and not being afraid. You know, I think we, we played the last couple of weeks, we kind of played back on our heels and kind of afraid. And it's like there's nothing to be afraid of. We just got to go out and, and be aggressive and, and go after these games. And they did that tonight, so I was really proud of them. Although Iowa lost against Iowa State, they showed improvement that they're hoping to bring into their weekend series against Illinois. And although softball is in the heat of their spring season, spring football is just getting started. And yesterday we heard from the offensive line on how the Hawks are shaping up this spring. I think we're doing all right. You know, a lot of guys are finishing people, so that's a good thing. We're, I think, I think the run game's going going pretty good for everybody. I mean, we obviously got a lot of work to do, but you know, it's it spring ball's a fun time. You know, we just get to go out and hit, go out and hit people. Spring ball is really about just detailing the fundamentals. Coach always talks about um, spring ball being working on the ABCs of the game, meaning like your first step, your pad level, um, your eye placements, all stuff like that. Just working on the fundamentals right now. Just be a better football player. I have not felt like these guys walk in here and they're not good examples for Jack Plum and Ezra Miller and Kellenberger and, and everybody else is kind of looking up to them a little bit and to say, hey, this is how we go to work. Quite frankly, it's been the opposite. I've been very pleased with their attention to detail in the, the effort level that they're giving. I'm just thankful I'm not one of those guys that Tristan likes to hit. But if I were a running back, I'd certainly be happy to have him blocking for me. Here's what the running backs had to say on how their experience is helping them during this spring season. A lot of potential here. Uh, you know, we're not going to be playing a game tomorrow or anything. So it's definitely a process with everything the coaches tell us every day. Our biggest thing is just get one uh, better, you find, find one thing you do better every single day, and that's what we've been planning on doing. And. Uh, we got one younger guy in the room. Other than that, everyone is basically older, including myself, and I just feel like it's leadership everywhere. You know, we, we're pushing each other daily to get better, you know, in, in the meeting room, on the field. These guys hadn't had a whole lot of reps, you know, coming into last season. You know, they, you know, Torn and, and um, Ivory had had some experience and some playing experience, but not as much at it as it was last year. So um, I think um, the more times they see different things and different movements, the better they get with their eyes and able to, you know, run with their eyes and their feet. And while Wirfs and other players on the football team have been setting career bests in the weight room this offseason, gymnast Stuart Brown was scoring a career best at the Big Ten Championships. DITV sports reporter Marissa Kraft tells us about Brown's big night on the big stage. Freshman Stuart Brown placed third on vault at the Big Ten Individual Championships. Brown earned a career best with a score of 14.625. Even more impressive is the fact that Brown did not find out that he was competing until the afternoon of the event. Because I didn't even know I was going to be competing today until like 2 p.m. Because um, I was one spot out of finals and then... JD texted me that somebody had scratched and I got in and I just knew I had to capitalize on it. And that's exactly what he did. He was the first to compete on vault and came out with a strong, solid routine. Brown was able to maintain the lead until the final two competitors performed, passing him up to earn gold and silver. Brown took this last minute opportunity as a moment to show Iowa City just what he was capable of. That was something coming in I knew that I was able to do, but I just knew there was a lot of good gymnasts and just wanted to do my best and put it up against their best. Reporting from Carver Hawkeye Arena, Marissa Kraft with DITV Sports. Brown and the rest of the Hawks will be back in action next weekend at the NCAA Championships. That'll wrap it up from me, but come back on here tomorrow where we'll start to hear from the Hawkeyes preparing for the NFL Draft. Take it away, Beck and Kalen. Thank you for tuning in to this Wednesday morning edition of DITV. Be sure to follow The Daily Iowan on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook for your latest updates. You can also grab a print edition of The Daily Iowan on CNs Now. For DITV, I'm Becca Scadden. And I'm Kaylin Cluck. Have a great day, Iowa City. We'll see you back here tomorrow, same time, same place.